What's up, everybody? Welcome to a brand new episode of Hashtag Ask Firebase, and we have a special one this week. Coding Doug is here with us, and fun fact about Doug is that he has better than average vision in only one eye. And a uh, fun fact about Dave is, that, is that he wanted to name his first child Kanye. Kanye East. But anyways, we have a great show for you today. We got lots of questions from AndevCon, so let's dive in. Oh, uh, there's no gum here. Just your computer? Yeah. Really? First up, we have a question from Jim at AndevCon. Let's check it out. My question for Firebase is this. We've got all these new features. Feels like Christmas. I'd like to know what's for Christmas next year. What can you tell me about Firebase's plans for the future? The, this, this is a difficult question to answer because at Google, we usually don't talk about the future. We don't make promises and we don't want to be misleading in any way. I would love to tell you more, but I can't. I will tell you this, that one of the hallmarks of the Firebase product is its ability for all of its uh, features to work well together. And we feel like we could do that even better than we do now. For example, analytics works well with a lot of uh, different uh, features and we would like that to be even uh, more than it is now. Uh, there's been a lot of demand for server-side hosted logic which is very crucial for a lot of apps to move logic from their app to the server. We're looking at ways to get that uh, done in a cost-effective and flexible way. So, you know, you can look for those things. I haven't really had my one-on-one -on -one with Santa yet, so... Have you been naughty? Let's cut that part. <laughs> <laughs> so let's check out our next question from Gary. I'd like to ask Firebase, how would I take an existing SQLite database that is relational and port that to Firebase storage services? That is a great question, Gary, and one that we get quite often. So there's no straightforward way of doing it. There are two totally different types of databases, but there are a couple tricks that you should know. So if you're going to start out with SQL, you usually work with tables. And with NoSQL, there is no tables, there's no foreign keys, there's none of that. But what you can do is take these tables and treat them as top level nodes in your NoSQL database. Anywhere where you have a foreign key, you can use the shared key concept in NoSQL, which pretty much means that these keys that you're using in your SQL database, you tend to just borrow them on the NoSQL side. So you make sure that each one of your nodes, when it needs to relate to something, just matches up. So like I said, there's no straightforward forward way of doing it, but if you follow some of these practices, it does make your life a lot easier. So Next, like this? Next, Next question. question. I'd like to ask Firebase how to send notifications based on app events. For example, if a user logs out of our app and we want to get them back, is it possible to send them a notification? All right, thanks for the question, Ben. And by the way, uh, I remember you and your team from the Hackathon. It was a ton of fun. To your question about sending notifications to users who have logged out. Uh, you can't do that with Firebase notifications, but you can do that with Firebase Cloud Messaging. It just requires that you have a server-side component to your app. And on your server-side logic, you can respond to a logout um, and then uh, schedule a message to be sent later on. So you can't do this on the client side only right now, but if you do have your own server side that can make that logic, you can do it that way. And on the server, there's SDKs for the real-time database. So you can actually monitor the things that happen in your app. So you can set up a queuing system. So when something happens, you can do something like send that push notification or send a payment or really whatever you want to do. So this next question comes from Lucy. I'd like to ask Firebase, do you make it easy to include photos and video in mobile apps? And do you allow permissions settings for who can read and write the photos and videos? That is a great question, Lucy. And by the way, thank you so much for participating in the hackathon. So do we make it easy to include photos and videos and set user permissions on them? Yeah, we do. Firebase Storage is the perfect solution for this. So with Firebase Storage, all you do is include the SDK in your app. And then when the user selects a photo, a video, really any file, you can upload that to Firebase Storage without any need for a server. And as far as authenticating users and protecting their data, well, when you integrate with Firebase Authentication, you can set security rules that secure those files to their proper owners. That is all customized by you and the Firebase console. So David, just how many photos could you store in Firebase Storage? One million photos. But seriously, probably like a lot more than that. Next, Next question. question. I'd like to ask Firebase how your notifications differ from doing notifications through APNS on uh, Apple or iOS and how they differ from Google Cloud Messaging. 
Great question, Sean. So it turns out that Google Cloud Messaging was actually rebranded to Firebase Cloud Messaging. And as part of that rebranding, there's now more things that it can do than GCM used to be able to do. So you can still send messages to Android devices and you can send messages to iOS devices and you can send messages to web clients as well. So you can do all that through FCM. But in your specific case, you asked about APNS, which is what you'd use to send to iOS devices. So it turns out that FCM uses APNS behind the scenes yep. to send its notifications. So when you're using FCM, you're actually using APNS in the background. You don't have to worry about all those details. Is there another question? Sure is. I'd like to ask Firebase to explain good use cases for Firebase with the Internet of Things, including specific examples in, in both practice and code. So that is a great question, Stephen. And a lot of people are using the real-time database for their IoT needs. And you can actually use the real-time database SDK on an Arduino. So it's a really nice fit there. Yeah, and it turns out there's code samples too. So if you go to GitHub, you can check out a project there and see how it's done. So the links are right here. Right here. Uh, right here. Right if you here. Use the links right here to see how it's done. So that's all the questions for this week. Thank you all so much for sending them in. And if you have any more questions, make sure to send them in to us on YouTube, Twitter, Stack Overflow. Just use the hashtag Ask Firebase and we will get to them. And if you're interested in getting started with Firebase and Android, check out this guy's screencast right here on our YouTube channel. And if you'd like to find out more about David East, you can read David East's diary going online right now.